Hey everybody, what's going on? Alan here. Welcome back to the channel and thank you very much for watching the episode here. Boy, do we've got a doozy of an episode too, a job. The entire front suspension on this thing is, as the thumbnail and title probably tells. I never figure that out before I do the episode, so I'm blabbering. But let me show you what we got here. Two lower control arms, two upper control arms, two inner tie rods, two outer tie rods. We've got a pitman arm, an idler arm, and an idler arm bracket. And I'm also, I'm gonna do the uh, sway bar bushings and links. I don't have those yet. But pretty much everything under the front end of this except for the shocks it's all getting replaced i don't the only problem or the hardest part i see about doing this is getting those torsion bars out of those lower control arms but we'll see it's a central california vehicle so hopefully there's no rust involved but uh let me just show you how bad this thing is real quick okay we got ball joints about to fall out of this guy and then that's the steering and the other side's even worse this one is actually about to fall out of that upper ball joint. It's it's crazy bad. We'll get uh, closer looks as we start taking it apart. First, we gotta get the tires off. Boy, do we have issues over here. And the steering. And those aren't doing anything. So the first thing I want to do is get the sway bar and the links off. And it's an interesting setup. I haven't seen this one before. But it looks like i got to hold this top cap. And then the bottom bolt goes all the way through into the cap. 14 millimeter. Now this thing is bent. Good times. This thing is heck of a bit. This one was not as, wasn't bent. Next is the sway bar itself. Next we gotta get the sway bar off itself. Next, I want to remove the brake caliper and rotor so I can get access to the speed sensor and remove that as well. And I'll hang the caliper up in the meantime. Jack handle to the rescue. The proper leverage. <laughs> right in the bolt hole. The what hole? Now I can get to this. Uh -huh. Okay. The heat shield here, this dust shield I mean. And the dust shield is pinched between 
the hub assembly and the knuckle. So it's got a bunch of shims in there. Don't lose the shims. Shims handy. That's going to be a 17. Now this is an 18. This big guy down here is a 24. There we go. Make some marks here. And over here. Now these are 21. supposed to be smashed in like that the other side is not a big deal okay so to get the shock out I got to relieve some of the tension on this torsion bar which is forcing that lower control arm down putting a lot of tension on the <laughs> putting a lot of tension on the shock so I don't have the tool to completely remove it I'm hoping this would be enough to just relieve some tension and then maybe with the floor jack I can lift it up lift the lower control arm up okay that's all the way loose okay just enough there to take the pressure off of the bottom shock bolt. See if we can get that out. Looks like 21s. Now I just gotta hope that I can get my floor jack out from underneath it.
Okay. I didn't get that on camera, but I just stepped on it real hard to try and break it loose because it kind of gets bound up in there. But now I can see that it's loose in here. Okay, so it's not going to slide out, but maybe with some light tapping, I can knock the key loose because it's got to come forward and then you got to slide it out that way. right on my head. All right, so what I have to do now is get the other side all taken apart down to this point, slide the bar out just like this, then I can remove the two bolts holding in this cross member, slide the bars back until they run into this cross member, and hopefully that'll be enough. All right, I've got the other side all done to this point. I just pull out these two 21 millimeter bolts. Oh no. slide this torsion bar enough to get it out of the control arm. Yeah. Just like that. And just like that. Now we can get the little control arms out. An 18 on this side and a 24 on the other. Took off these nuts. Now I gotta separate them from the arms. It's slipping. It's scary. interesting that wasn't even tight like it didn't require any breaking loose 
and it's fallen off. It doesn't even... Huh. That's crazy. That's interesting. I just got to do two of those. So this is a Duralast gold bracket, it's greasable, you can see it through some grease on there and the uh, arm as well, it's got a squeezing out, so put it in, slide the bolts back in and then I'll tighten up. And this is greased up too, so we're ready to go.
So this gold line is not too bad. Um, it comes with, you know, Zerk fittings are greasable and some Loctite for this end. Now what I did was just line up this mounting surface and these two Zerk fittings, the grease point center to end. I'll do that for both sides and install them. Now this ball joint also on the inner tie rod is greasable through this hole here, which you'll grease through that Zerk fitting right there and it'll come right down the center. Okay, should be plenty of grease. And they're both tightened up and greased up. Now I can get back to the suspension. It's time for the big dogs. Jim, I need these guys are heavy. That bolt's in, I just gotta tap it in like I did that one. Dang. Got those on, but I can't tighten them up yet. I gotta put these bars in. Now we, since I've got the other one in too, if I can go to the back, we can install that cross member that's right there and the keys, get these control arms situated, then we'll move on to the uppers. Okay. Alrighty for the good stuff. So I'm using a stool to hold the control arm up where it was before. All right, I had that key in upside down. Now it makes much more sense. So you want this hole facing downward. Just enough. Okay, that is finger tight, so to speak. It can still move. Let's get this other one in in the right spot. Okay, got those about where they need to be. All right, let's slide this in. Put that nut on there. Oh, there it is. Yeah. 
put this in. And we can tighten all those up, put all the cotter pins in them. I'm going to do like I did the other side and disconnect it from the connector. It's going to be easier to put the hub back together. to mess with I didn't have to mess with all this on the other side She also needs shocks and wheel bearings real bad. <laughs> So, but that's going to add $350 just for the bearings uh, to get decent brand. And then the shocks, I haven't even priced those out yet, but she's already spending like 800 bucks on, because I have a commercial account and I'm hooking her up with the price. I'm giving her my prices, no extra charge up at all just straightforward what I would pay this is over the counter all these Duralast gold parts would have been like 1200 bucks right maybe a little more because I was pricing out standard Duralast stuff and I guess Dave behind the counter the commercial guy he got me a whole bunch of Duralast gold stuff for like 800 bucks so, I don't even know what all this Duralast gold over the counter would be, but like 11, 1200 bucks, easy, just for this right here. Um, but yeah, we're, the wheel bearings are easy to change later in the future, and so are the shocks. Maybe next paycheck. But for now, we can. Ugh. Now, which way does this go? Does it go like that? I think it goes like that. Chimney, dude. Put just a little bit of lift on it to get the shock bolt back in. Just 
like I did to get it out. Now I gotta wait till it's all on its way to tighten like all four control arm bolts and that shock bolt. The bolt and the brake lines back up. That's one side done. And I don't think that's supposed to be smashed up like that. I think this thing's been bottomed out way too much. And it's curved in this left side of the bracket. But I don't think it's a big deal. Maybe. You just want to go until the bushings are about the width of the washers. Alright, time to tighten this stuff up. Put them back to where they were, which is about three threads, four threads showing. Just under flush with the bracket. All right, time to put the tires on and then roll it up on ramps and tighten all the control arm bushings and the camber 
line them up to those marks that I scribed. The job done. Hopefully it doesn't clunk. I did the alignment best I could. Try to save her an alignment cost. Oh, no popping. That's good. Oh my God, definitely feel the difference. Nice. <laughs> Right? Yes, that's, uh, that's, that's a good thing. Awesome. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's it, guys. Let me know what you think. What would you charge for that job? I gave her a pretty good deal on parts and labor, but uh, let me know in the comments below. Please like, please subscribe, hit the bell, and until next time, peace. Huh? My stool scooted out from under me when I stood up and it wasn't there when I went back down. <laughs>